In this tutorial, we will be creating a 3D animation showing some blood flowing through a vessel. We'll start by modeling the red blood cell and then creating the vessel and then we'll create the simulation to move the red blood cells through the vessel. So I hope you enjoy and please don't forget to subscribe. The first thing we need to do is create the red blood cell. Just create a uh, cube. Okay. Now with that cube selected, go into your scale and just scale it down on the Z so it's a bit thinner, like that. Okay, then go into edit mode, polygons, select the top polygon and the bottom polygon and hit I for um, insert and insert them to about there. They should be the same, top and bottom. With those two polygons still selected, um, hit E for extrude and then just click off that so you don't move anything. And then go back into your scale tool and just shrink that down. Now we want to, if we go into wireframe mode and just go to a side view, we want to shrink those down to about there. We don't want them overlapping like that. So there should be a gap between them. Okay, go back into shade mode, go into object mode and add a subsurf modifier. Okay, and there's the basics of our red blood cell. Select that and we'll just go object and uh, smooth smooth shade. And there's our red blood cell. Okay, so that's a little bit low res. Um, we can crank these the subsurf modifier up when we come to render. But for now, I think that will be fine. So one change I want to make is I just want to soften this edge along here. So I'm just going to go back into edit mode. If you turn this little triangle here on the subsurf modifier, you can. See the um, subdivision surfaces in the mo in, um, when you're editing, and just scale that down a bit. Go back into object mode, and that just softens it a little bit. Okay, and I might just shrink it down a bit on the Z there, and that's how red blood cell. Easy as that. So that selected, just double click it and call it RBC for red blood cell, and we'll give it a material. And we'll call it red blood cell or RBC. Okay. Right. So let's turn that off. And now we're going to create the um, blood vessel. So to do that, we're going to start with the curve. Just a path is fine. Okay. I'm going to go into edit mode. And we can see the vertices there. We, um, we'll go back into object mode and we'll just scale that up. So about there if you can see that on the grid okay go back into edit mode and then we'll just select these vertices and we just want to move them around so it's a bit of a natural looking tube and blood vessel you don't have to go too crazy on this so essentially we're going to have the camera around about here so the camera is going to be looking th through the blood vessel there so what we want is enough of a, of a bend here that we don't see the open end of the uh, blood vessel. Okay. So once you've got that kind of how you, how you like it, go back in object mode, go to curve, as you will name this, because we actually want two of these. So we're going to call this the vessel. Okay, we'll be converting this to polygons a bit later on. With that selected, um, control C and control V to copy and paste it. And with the second one selected, call that call that um, um, flow curve. Okay, we're going to use that for the particles. So we'll just turn that off. We don't need it. Select the first one again, which should be the vessel. Sorry, I named that wrong. And we're going to go into um, full mode. We want that to be full. We're going to go into geometry and under bevel depth, we're going to up that to about 0.5, 0 0.5 a meter. And then resolution, we're going to go to about six. Now what's important here, if we turn on wireframe, okay, we want these polygons to be as square as possible. We're going to be adding a displacement to it later on. So the squarer these are, the better displacement we're going to get. So let's just play around with that until we get um, something we like. 
you can play with that resolution there on the um, resolution preview. So if we go to 6 there, and 6 there is fine. That, that looks good. We're not going to get perfect square polygons everywhere, but in general that's good. Okay, so that's our blood vessel. And you'll see that when we have this blood flow curve highlighted, it matches it perfectly. Okay, you can just see it there. So we'll turn that off again. All right, so now we're going to convert that into polygons. Actually, what we're going to do first is just put in the camera and make sure that it looks how we want it to. So we'll grab the camera, hit N for numeric to bring up this panel on the right hand side, um, and toggle on lock camera to view, and go into your camera view which is um, zero on, on your numeric keypad and just move your camera into position so if we go something like that that will be fine that will be fine there so somewhere around there okay so turn off lock camera to view. You can hide your camera if you want so you don't move it. And with the vessel selected, you want to go to Object, Convert to Mesh from Curve. Okay. So now that's an editable mesh. And the next thing we're going to do is put a bit of displacement on there. So actually the next thing we're going to do is make sure we have given that a texture. So we'll call it Vessel. Oh, that's not how you spell vessel. There we go. Okay, so with that selected, go into your modifier tab, add modifier, and add a displace modifier. Okay, if you click on this little icon here, that will take you to a texture. So you want to click new, texture, and we'll just add a clouds. Okay, so that's all right. So you can see how this is very coarse or very rough. It's not looking that good. If we add a subsurf modifier, okay, that smooths it out. But that's not actually what we want. We want it to the displacement to be finer. So we will move the subsurf modifier above the displacement, and that way the displacement is working after the subsurf modifier, meaning it's got more geometry to, to uh, work with, so it get, you get a finer displacement. So that subdivision works there. We're going to displace it and we'll turn that down to about 0.2. It doesn't need to be too high. Let's have a look from our camera. I think that would be okay. And under that, we'll add another subdivision surface just to smooth it out. We'll go turn off wireframe and we have a look. That looks pretty good there. I'm happy with that. And that is our blood vessel. Now, if we turn on our red blood cell, you can see that's in there. We can just select that and just move it outside the blood vessel so we don't see it through the camera. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to need is a is an emitter for the particles. So just create a mesh um, UV sphere is fine. And we're going to want to put that at the end of this flow curve here. So if we turn that on and turn off the vessel, and then we turn on snap. Um, vertex and center and we just hit G to move the um, sphere you will see that it will snap to the start of the curve that's exactly what we want okay so we'll also name that emitter you don't need to give it a shader because we're not going to be rendering it okay so with that selected we now want to create a particle system so just go to the particle tab and new and we're, it's going to be the only particle system so I'm not going to worry about naming it and let's just play that and we've got particles but they're all falling down um, which isn't, isn't what we want so we are going to pause that and go into the um, scene tab there and just turn off gravity we play that again so they're not falling down, but they're still moving out on their own. We don't want that either. So with the particle tab, go to velocity and turn normal down to zero. And if we play that now, the particles are being emitted on the surface of the sphere and not moving. That's what we want. Okay. 
Now what we want is for these particles to move along the curve. So select the curve, go into the force tab, force field, and make it a curve, a curve guide. Okay, and play that. Now what's happening here is it's doing what we want it to do, it's just the curves are in the wrong way. So select your curve, go in edit mode, select a, select a vertice, go into segments, and switch direction. Go back into object mode and then play the simulation again, and we've got what we want there. So that's perfect. Okay. So what I might just do with the particles is just have them emit from volume. So emit from phases on emit from volume. Might not make too much of a difference, but you know that is nicer, I think. Okay, so we'll turn the blood vessel back on. And then we'll have a look through the camera. See what we've got. So we've got the blood flowing through. That's good. Um, I think we could probably up the size of the emitter here. So just grab it and say S for scale. So I grab the emitter and S for scale and just size it up to about there. So it fits inside the vessel. Go back to the camera view, play that through and let's have a look. That's fine. Okay, so rather than having these dots on the particle system here, we want to instance the red blood cell. So go to the emitter, go down to render, render as select object, drop down object and select your red blood cell. There we have it. So the red blood cells are now going through the blood vessel. We'll go to scale and we'll size these up and we'll drop the number down. So let's say 250, play that through. Okay, that's probably enough for our purposes. Now they're all kind of lying down flat, facing the same direction. We want to change that. So we are going to go to rotation, turn it on, just go normal and randomize. Go back and play that. And they're all different now. That's what we want. Now something I'm seeing here, which if we come out and go to turn the vessel off and we'll go to the top view. Particles seem a lot thicker in the center, which I'm not too, I'm not liking. So I might go back to faces for the emission of the particles and see what that looks like. I think that's a bit better. Let's have a look through the camera and turn the vessel back on. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so the other issue we've got is we have the emitter in our view. So we want to make sure that we don't see that. So under render, we want to turn off show emitter. Let's just do a preview of that and see what happens. It's hard to tell because we can't see anything. Okay, so we just play through that once more. Nice simple blood flow there. Okay, we'll save the scene. And now we are going to set up some shaders and some lighting. Okay, so we're going to turn off the blood vessel. And we are going to set up a uh, camera. Where's the camera there? Okay. We're going to set up a spotlight. Light spot okay with the spotlight selected we just want to move that to where the camera is the transform tool sorry it turned snapping off so roughly where your camera is and we'll point it in the direction of the camera okay Let's have a look through the camera now, and we'll just do a quick render with the vessel arm. And I'll grab the light, and so I'm just going to speed this up a bit. Okay, 
Let's just have another look at this. Okay, so the light's actually outside the vessel. So we'll just move that over my tad. Have another look through and give that another quick render. There we go. Now we're getting something. Okay, so we're going to grab the spotlight and we're just going to adjust the brightness on it. The emission is strength is 100. Let's try 1000. That works out alright. Now we're still seeing this ball, the emission, or the, the emitter sphere. We want to turn that off. So select it. The emitter. And under particles, we want to go to show emitter, turn that off. And make sure show emitter and render is turned off as well. Okay. That's fine. So let's start working on some shading. We will do some more tweaking to the lights a bit later on. So let's go in the shading tab, go camera view, turn on, go into rendered view, and then we will select the texture. Okay, and then we'll have a play around with this. So basically, blood vessels are red. So we're going to try and find a nice base red color to start with. Out there. Let's try and turn the roughness down. I like to have that up. So about 0.4. I want to add a bit of bump to it. Okay. So we're going to create a noise texture node. And then vector bump. Plug the factor into height. Normal into normal on the principled shader node and then size it up until we start seeing something okay now I'm going to turn the strength down to about 0.2 that's not too bad I'll just try and crank it right up and see I like to go extreme sometimes when I'm playing with these things and just see what it looks like Point one two and let's try a hundred okay and we'll knock that down to point one again don't want too much bump there okay so we're going to grab a um, input lay weight so we're going to try and grab, take that edge effect that you get on some um, x-ray images or, or the microscopic images so just with the lay weight grab that go to converter color ramp Okay, connect facing into factor. Grab a shader emission. And plug the color into color and the emission. And then what we want to do is tidy this up a little bit. So we're going to just move these down here. Okay. Then we're going to grab a shader add. And there we go. So we're, we're getting that kind of highlight around the edge of the um, object. We just want to tweak that a bit. So we'll play around with some of the settings. Okay. Turn that back to 0.5. Let's just bring this down. Okay, so we don't want it quite that strong. So we'll have a play around. We'll try a RGB curves. There we go. So we just want it to be on the edge. We want it to be quite soft. Something like that. We also want it to be affected by the bump. So take the normal from the bump into the layer weight node. And then we get it on the bump as well. Okay. Let's play around a bit more. like that. Now what you can also do if you wanted to is the white. We could play around with the colors on that. Make it just a little bit red. It's not too bad. Okay. 
Now I'm just going to play with that bump a little bit more, see what it looks like um, a bit stronger. That's not too bad. Okay, so we'll save the scene, save the scene, and then we will grab. So we will go to uh, layout view and we'll just bring some of that simulation in to about there, and go back to rendered. Sorry, shading. Okay, so now we're going to shade the red blood cells. So select that, and we're going to do much the same thing here. So we're going to grab a layer weight. We're going to grab an emission shader. Okay. And then we're going to grab a converter color ramp. Okay, so that goes into factor. That goes into color. Okay, don't forget to make the base color red because these are red blood cells. And turn the vest back on just to compare the two. Problem is we've got a red background and, and red hero objects, so we're just going to tweak that so they stand out. So I might just make that quite bright. I think that's enough. And then we're just going to tweak this little edge here. And we can play around with that cover as well. And about there. Actually, I prefer it a bit, a bit whiter than that. There we go. Okay, that's looking alright. Now with the spotlight, I'm going to turn off shadows. You don't need to see them. And I'm going to add in one more light. So if we go, I'll just go out of shade mode now. We're going to add one in the background there. Okay. Just grab a point light. Where did that go? Okay, and we're going to move it just on top of that sphere. On the top of the emitter. Okay, let's look through the camera and the rendered mode. And that just brightens up this back area a bit. So we could change that to a different color. That's good enough. Okay, that's great. We'll save that scene. Now we're going to do some depth of field with the camera. So select your camera. Uh, the camera selected. Go to select distance. We'll just crank it up and crank size up to 0.1. That kicks in your depth of field. And then we'll just manually move this until we get it focused on what we want. Now a better way of doing this, which I'll show you because that's not the best way. So with the depth of, depth of field, we'll go back into layout. Uh, empty, sorry. And we'll just call that, so we'll just call that depth of field control. Okay, we'll go back into um, shading. Okay, and with the depth of field, so I select the camera and for the focus object we'll make that the depth of field control and so wherever we move that null now it will adjust the depth of field move it across so we can see it okay we just go out from here I'll just move it to about there I think that works. It gives us some nice blurring in the background and also some in the foreground there. Okay, so we're going to turn on ambient occlusion. We'll just give that a quick render and see what that looks like. So this is a render pass. We won't see it in this image. We go combined and go AO. That's our depth, um, sorry, our ambient occlusion there, which looks terrible. So we're going to go into the world tab. Under ambient occlusion, we're just going to change that to one meter, see what it looks like. 
that's looking a bit better. We're getting some kind of contact shadows there between the um, blood vessel and the red blood cells. I'd like to see a bit more detail around in the ridges and displacement of the um, of the vessel. So we'll try point one. So we'll try three meters. It's about as good as we're going to get, I think. We'll see if we use that or not. Um, so for the test comp I'm going to do, I'm going to comp the, or create a composition with the ambient occlusion over the top of this image. I am going to turn off depth of field. So it's just set size to zero. And I'm going to just increase the sample slightly, just so we get a little bit of a better render. So we'll change that to 16. We start, still are only doing preview renders, so we don't need the best quality just yet. Okay, so hit F12 to render that. Go into Compositing tab, click on Use Nodes, and if you hold Control and Shift and click on the image, it will automatically create a viewer. That's what we've got there for our, our beauty image or our coloured image. We would not worry about the alpha or the depth, and there's our ambient, ambient occlusion. So it's not too bad. So the way we'll be comping that is just simply adding a color mix and we will be putting the occlusion on top and then we'll be changing that to multiply. Okay. So we change the factor to zero, you'll see the difference around the red blood cells. Okay, just looks a little bit nicer. Okay, so we are going to do a full res render now and then we'll go have a play around with the comp so I'm going to set that to 256 and we'll give that a render okay so in the composition window we update that, that's our beauty image now, and that's our occlusion, okay, and that's what it's like if we put the two over. I'm just going to play with the, cur the um, curves on the occlusion, so I'll view the occlusion on its own and we'll just see what we can do to improve it. You don't want to overdo this effect, otherwise it starts to look really muddy, so I think something like that will be fine. Okay. Okay, and then we're going to just have a quick play with the curves in the final image. It looks okay there. It's a little tweak, not much different to be honest. Very slight difference. So about there. I think that looks okay. So we can do one more render with our depth of field on. So select your camera and change that to what we had it at, which I think was 0.2. Have to go back and check. 0.2 is really a bit strong actually. So 0.1. That's a bit better. Go back into compositing. Okay. So we'll turn rendering off there. Select compositing, save the scene. And then we will do a final render and see what it looks like. Okay, so there's the final render. Um, it looks okay. The depth of field is looking a bit noisy. Um, rather than upping my samples, I'm just going to turn on to noising and see what it looks like um, when we render out the animation. Okay, so just before we send this off to render, I noticed something which I should have shown you before. Um, and you'll see this too if you've already rendered it or if you um, preview it in the viewport. But if you watch the animation through, you'll see that the blood cells start at frame zero. And by the end of our animation, at two, 200, frame 250, they've only just gone past the camera. 
So you actually don't get to see the blood cells for very long at all. Um, that could be probably shown better in this view here. So at frame zero, we've got nothing. And then they start. And by the time we get to the end, they've only just started to come through. Ideally, we want these to come through or, or to be there all the time. So to fix that, we are going to select the particles. Go into the particle tab. And we are going to turn, we, first thing we need to do is turn the cache off. Okay. And uh, free all backs. Now we can change these parameters again. So the start frame, we're going to make a negative. So we're going to try minus 100. And as you can see, they're closer to the camera now at the beginning. So if we go to frame 0 or frame 1, they're closer to the camera. So we'll try minus 250. And there, it's almost there. Let's try minus 300. Okay, so they're past the camera at the start now, which is what we want. So that looks much better. So when you start the animation, the red blood cells will already be there. Okay. So we're going to save the scene. And then what we need to do is turn this cache back on and click on bake. Let that bake those frames. And then save the scene. So we'll render this out now and then we'll take a look. So there's our animation. We can see the red blood cells going through the vessel. Um, I think that looks alright. And I hope you enjoyed it. And remember, please subscribe.